from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, would you join me in the book of Jeremiah? Jeremiah, the first chapter. Jeremiah, the first chapter. And we're going to look at Jeremiah 1, verse, verses 5 through 10. Jeremiah chapter, chapter 1, verse 5 through 10. When you have it, it reads as follows. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. I've just read Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 5 through 10. Into your hearing, the word of God is already blessed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for protecting us from dangers seen and unseen. We thank you, Father God, for ordering our steps, God. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs, God. We thank you for being a provider. We thank you for being a healer. We thank you for being our shepherd. We thank you for being our teacher. We thank you for being our lawyer. We thank you for being our comforter. We just thank you for being everything right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, we ask you right now, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, God, expose your ability and remove it in the name of Jesus. Any unconfessed sin, any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, anything we didn't do that we were supposed to, anything that we did that we weren't supposed to do, Father God, and anything that we may have done and we didn't know that we shouldn't have done it, Father God, Lord, forgive us. Please forgive us, God. Hallelujah. Lord, the things that we struggle with, Father God, hallelujah, help us to stop struggling with those things, Father God. Whether it's bitterness, unforgiveness, Father God, anger, hate, sorrow, jealousy, envy, Father God, those things that we just can't let go of because they're hooked into us, Father God. We ask you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you detach the enemy's claw, Father God, so that we can have victory and deliverance from those things, Father God. Now we ask you to open our eyes that we behold the wonder things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Open our hearts so that the seed of the word that comes forth tonight finds today, finds good ground, brings about fruit in due season, God. Lord, now hide me on the cross. Speak through lips of clay. Let your words of my mouth, let your words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So, I want to talk about the text first, and then we'll get on to the purpose. But in the, text, in the text that we just read in the book of Jeremiah, first chapter, verses 5 through 10, we see that the prophet Jeremiah and God are having a conversation. And God is telling Jeremiah that he is going to be a prophet to the nations in the text. And Jeremiah is coming back against God with his own insecurities. Jeremiah is telling 
God about who he is and he is perceiving himself in retrospect to his assignment versus how God is perceiving him. Jeremiah is telling God, I'm a youth. I cannot do this. But Jeremiah is limited in his perspective of himself. Jeremiah is looking at the person who he is. Jeremiah, the prophet, sees himself at his present state of development, but God sees the prophet through the eyes of eternity. Mm. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Are you paying attention? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah sees himself as he is at the moment, but God is speaking to Jeremiah through the eyes of eternity. God is speaking to Jeremiah from his divine perspective, not from Jeremiah's perspective. Have you ever gotten, or has anyone here ever gotten a piece of mail? And that piece of mail said something uh, toward the, um, along the lines of, you've been pre-approved for a car loan, or uh -huh. you have been pre-approved for a certain line of credit, a MasterCard, or a Visa. And you didn't send anybody any letter, you didn't go and ask nobody, you weren't even on the market for a car, or you weren't looking for a credit card, right? Mm -hmm. But these financial institutions, they already did research, and they determined that you would be a good candidate for their credit program, whether you desire the credit or not. Y'all with me so far? Yes. Yes. In similar fashion, this is how God is addressing Jeremiah. God is saying, you are a good candidate. I've done some research about you. I know about you. I know your potential. I know even in spite of your reservations about yourself, mm -hmm. God knew Jeremiah's potential and Jeremiah's purpose. And because God knew that, God made a proposal to Jeremiah's purpose. God made a proposal to Jeremiah's potential. I want you to understand that God makes proposals to our potential and our purpose. God makes proposals to our potential and our purpose. We got to understand that God said he knew Jeremiah. In the text, isn't that what it says? He knew Jeremiah before Jeremiah was formed in his mother's womb. That means he knew Jeremiah as a seed before he was formed formed in his mother's womb before he before there was consummation before the egg was fertilized are y'all with me so far yeah. are you sure y'all with me he knew him in his mother's womb i don't know y'all looking kind of hard at me but i want to make sure that y'all are getting this because because god knew jeremiah before jeremiah was formed so you have to understand that just as god knew jeremiah he's no respecter of persons he also knew you before you were formed in your mother's well, listen, Amen. God knows your seed design, he knows your seed dispersal, and he knows your seed destination. Mm. You paying attention? Mm -hmm. You're a seed, right? Yeah. God knows that you're a seed, he knows your seed design, right? That means he knew what you were before you knew. If I just had a bunch of different types of seeds and I just placed them out randomly up here on the pulpit, you couldn't you would have a hard time determining what seed what type of fruit would come from the seed unless it was inside of the package, unless you're a seedologist or something like that. Yes, I just made that up. But but the, but the reality but the reality is that each seed is genetically encoded to produce a certain fruit or vegetable. Y'all with me so far? Y'all yeah, yeah. with me so far? So an apple seed will produce Apple. An orange seed will produce orange. Watermelon seed will produce watermelon. Praise God. I got a good class. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, 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 but, but, and just like that, God knows our seed. Right. He knows the seed inside of you, whether he's going to produce a chef or a lawyer or a prophet or a pastor, or he knows your seed right. before right. you know. No. He yeah. knows. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the first thing we have to understand when God says he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, we have to know this about God. He knows our seed. Let me ask you a question. Does an apple tree sapling yield fruit? An 
tree There's an apple tree. It's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer that. But but an apple tree sampling sapling doesn't yield fruit until it's a full grown tree. Right. But that doesn't mean the seed is different, and that doesn't mean the purpose is different. That just means the time for the seed to um, uh, the time for the fruit to come forth mm -hmm. is not appropriate. Amen? Amen? So the first thing we have to understand about God and Him knowing our purpose mm -hmm. is that God knows our seed design. Amen? Amen? After that, God knows our seed dispersal. Amen? Amen. Amen. God knows our seed dispersal. A dis dispersal, seed dispersal means how the seed travels and gets to where it's ultimately going to be planted, be rooted, and produce its fruit or its harvest. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. Um, 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 Y'all know dandelions, right? Yeah. Weeds. Right. You know, and, 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 and then, you know, they, 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 they sprout up and they're yellow, right? But then after time, the yellow part turns white, right? Mm -hmm. And then we pick them up when we blow them and they fly in the wind, right? Mm -hmm. But God designed those plants because that's how he intended for the, the seed to be dispersed, right. to be spread all over the world. Anybody here like strawberries? No. Where are the seeds that in the strawberries? Don't answer that. The seed in, in the strawberries actually on the skin, those little dots you see. But how are those seeds um, dispersed? They're dispersed through our bodies. When we excrete them, we eat them, they go through our, our digestive tract, and, and, and not just our bodies, but the animals that eat them in nature, they travel, and so that's how they... Oh, Johnny Appleseed, he was a dispersal a mechanism for apples in the United States. He took apple seeds and he dispersed them. But we have to understand that when God says he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, the first thing he understood is our seed design, and the second thing that God knew in his... And, and his infinite wisdom is our seed dispersal. Listen, he knew I was going to be born in New Jersey, but he also knew that situations and circumstances would move me to Philadelphia. Right. But he also knew that there was a seed inside me designed for Philadelphia. Amen. He knew that he, by my life, he knew that my choices, he knew that my career, he knew that my family would pull me away from home and make set up camp here. He knew before I was formed in my mother's room what, what my my design was and my dispersal so just because you were born up north jersey don't mean he hasn't assigned you for this place right. just because just just because you was you you were from the south doesn't mean he didn't bring you up i i, I could get i i could, I could take this a whole other way my daddy was from virginia but he understood that my daddy had a seed that needed to be planted in new jersey so that that, that so that it could bear fruit so that another seed that could be born in new jersey oh y'all not listen to me god foresaw all of that he always has a plan we don't understand even through even through slavery and how our people originated in Africa and how they wound up here, a lot of times we get caught up in the journey, but we forget about the purpose. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> God knows our seed design, and God knows our seed dispersal, and finally, God knows your seed destination. I kind of snuck in there on the last point, but God knows where you will be planted, God knows where you will grow, God knows where you will blossom, and God knows where you will produce the harvest you were divinely designed to yield. Yes. God knows. A lot of times we're trying to bring forth that harvest, but that seed won't grow there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wow. Sometimes, wow. sometimes we can't produce that harvest, listen, listen, because we're being stubborn and won't allow God to disperse us. The way we're fighting against going, God says go, and sometimes we say no. no. We want to stay where it's comfortable. Huh. We want to stay where it's easy in the place that God is sending us. It may look like a dry and weary land, right. but the reality is he's designed your seed to blossom in that area. Uh -huh. I always talk about, you know, our choice to have a church in Kensington. Right. Had we known that Kensington was Kensington, we would have never came to Kensington. I'm talking about in the flesh. Right. I'm talking about if we knew the crime rate and the drugs and the addiction and the poverty, we would have been like, man, ain't nobody going there. But because we didn't know, watch this, mm. we didn't know, but God knew. Right. But what God also knew is God knew our seed. 
yeah. and he knew yeah. what we were genetically, spiritually encoded with mm. was just what this community needed. Amen. Amen. So we're here because God knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. And 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 and, and, and I have, that has a point as we we reference our text because Jeremiah. Jeremiah was pre-qualified for his assignment mm. before he applied for the job. <laughs> <laughs> he was pre-qualified for the assignment before he applied for the job. There's, there, there, um, some of you may be familiar with monsterjob.com or, or other agencies that you post your, your information on the internet and then you know if they like your resume, then they'll give you a call. We call them headhunters. Yeah. We call them headhunters, right? So check it out. I haven't put a resume on the internet for over 10 years and I still get calls. Jesus. Come on. No, I still get calls with people who want me to come work for them off of a resume I put on the internet 10 years ago. Yeah. They say, Mr. Thompson, you're qualified. I, I, I pre-qualified for positions that I'm not even interested in, that I'm not even, all, 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 be, all because of something that happened a long time ago. Right. Be, be, before, be, because God spoke it and purposed us into existence, we are pre-qualified for some things Things. Mm -hmm. hmm. God is speaking in the first chapter of Jeremiah between verses 5 and 10. God is speaking to Jeremiah concerning Jeremiah according to what he sees in Jeremiah through his lens of omnipresence. I know I've been messing with y'all with the omnipresence thing for a couple of you know weeks now. I want you guys to really get a a firm understanding of the omnipresence of God and the omnipresence nature of God so that you can have a better understanding of who you really are in him. So the word omnipresent, um, the prefix omni comes from the Latin meaning all. Not that complicated, right? Omni comes from the Latin meaning all. So to say that God is omnipresent is to say that God is present everywhere, all the time, existing in the past, present and future all at once. You understand? He's in Africa, he's in Europe, he's in Australia, he's at the North Pole, he's at the South Pole. Can I get deep? He's on Saturn, Jupiter, he's in, He's out of the Milky Way, he's in the Crab Nebula, all at once, and he's there yesterday and tomorrow. Right, right. right. That you, you have to, now you, you please get that. Please, please get that about God. And see, and, and, and that's how, now, now y'all got that, right? Yes. I, got, I, got, I got scripture, I'm not just making that up. Isaiah 43, verse 13, and this is the New Living Translation. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. Yes. No one can undo what I have done. So now y'all can't say it just sounded good. Right. I gave you scriptural reference to God saying, from eternity to eternity, I am. From the beginning to the end, I am. Y'all with me so far? Yeah, yes. Okay, we go. Okay. All right. Amen. Watch this. The Bible uses two words, two words um, to refer to time. You guys have heard me use one of the words a lot lately, chronos. Right, right. And the other word is kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, if you're taking notes. Chronos and kairos, right? So chronos refers to clock time. It refers to measurable time. It refers to minutes, seconds, hours, months, years. That's the chronos of time. Kairos, I like kairos, because kairos is the time that the Bible often refers to when it's talking about God and such statements as the fullness of time. But kairos measures moments. Remember that time we went to the... Yeah. Remember that time, so-and-so. That's a kairos type of time, y'all right, with me so right, far. Right. So, so it measures moments. And, and furthermore, when we're talking about the kairos nature of time, it refers to the right moment. It refers to the right moment, the opportune moment, the perfect, uh -huh. the perfect moment, right? Mm -hmm. And it is because God operates in the position of omnipresence, in the fullness of time, past, present, future, um, tomorrow, today, seconds, minute, because he operates in the fullness of time, meaning all variables and all traits, whether it's seconds or hours, he always acts in perfect time. Mm. 
See, he always acts in perfect time because he's acting throughout of all of eternity. Y'all with me so far? Y'all, do y'all, do, do, did y'all at least, do y'all have a better understanding of, of, of God and his omnipresence? Do y'all at least, if y'all get that, that's great. Yeah. Because see, what we're talking about when we're talking about, I'm tying it all together with Jeremiah and how Jeremiah had issues with what God was asking him. God wasn't talking to Jeremiah at that moment. God was speaking to Jeremiah and who Jeremiah was in the fullness yes. of time. So, yes. so God has the eternal perspective, right? God, God, God proposed, if you would. God proposed to the potential in Jeremiah. God made a covenant with Jeremiah based upon what he knew Jeremiah would become. Yeah. Not based upon who Jeremiah was standing before him right then. Just like, just like a, 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 a sculptor. A sculptor makes a, 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 he sees a lump of, we see a lump of clay, right. but a sculptor, mm, yes, he yes. sees a vase, yes. he sees a vessel, yes. or if he has a, a piece of marble, he sees a statue. Yes. You, you understand? When, when God looks at us, he looks at us through the lens of his omnipresent nature, and he sees a finished product. Y'all okay? Y'all yeah. pray, praise God. Y'all y'all pray for me. Hallelujah. And just as God told Jeremiah he knew him before he was formed in his mother's womb and he womb that he made a, a proposal to him God proposes or rather offers us covenant because he knows what is possible with the potential we possess when placed in his power you understand God makes a proposal with our potential God makes a proposal with our purpose he knows that in covenant with him is the only way we can fulfill our divine purpose he proposes a proposal is an act of offering or suggesting something for exception adoption or performance an offer or suggestion of watch this marriage that's what a proposal is right a proposal is an, it, it's all those things but it's also watch this I, I gotta get you to see this because this is important. Every time we've been studying it whew, here at House of Triumph, every time marriage or something pops up, we, we, we go straight to covenant. Right. We go straight to covenant. And and, and, and I, I wanna be a good I wanna be a, a biblically sound pastor so that y'all don't have to say that's just pastor making stuff up. Right. In the book of Hosea, and it was about ten mm -hmm. scriptures talking about marriage as covenant, but I picked um Hosea two sixteen Verse 16 through 20. I'm not going to read all of it. But um, verse 16 reads, In that day declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the balls from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. Verse 18. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, the birds in the sky, and the creatures that move along the ground. So we see that when God says that we can call him husband, mm -hmm. that we are entering into covenant. Now, what's the importance of the proposal and proposing that we enter into covenant as it pertains to God knowing us before we were formed in our mother's womb? The point is that one proposes to another based on expectation of the future benefit. Mm -hmm. We propose to someone based on expectation of future benefit. In construction, before we sign contracts, we submit proposals. Right. This is the work that I want done, and then it comes back, well, this is how much it's gonna cost. And so if we can agree upon the work and the cost, then we go into a contract. Right. But we're not in a contract with God, we are in a covenant with God. Listen, I remember when I first met my wife a long time ago, not too long, but a little bit a long, a long time ago. I remember I remember when we first met. I remember one of the conversations we had early on and I was SMH. I was shaking my head. I was like, I couldn't believe some of the stories that she told me about past relationships because I remember telling her, I said, man, you have so much potential. I said, you have so much wasted potential. And then I think back on that day, and I don't even know if she believed me or not. Maybe she just thought it was game. Maybe she just thought I was saying the right thing at the right time to try to get with her. But it did, listen, 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 listen. But I saw potential in her way back when. And it did not matter 
if she believed that I saw potential in her, the only thing that mattered was that I was convinced that there was potential in her. So much that I pursued that potential and made a proposal to who she would be down the road. See, I saw her potential, so I proposed to get in covenant with her because I believe down the road that she would be an awesome woman of God. I believe that down the road she would be an awesome parent. I believe down the road she could be an awesome sister. I believe down the road she could be an awesome friend. Amen. So I made a proposal on her potential. Right. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. So, 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 so in the same way, when God makes a proposal mm -hmm. to us Amen. to do something, to go somewhere, he's seeing what we will be, watch this, through the eyes of eternity. Yeah. He's not looking at us right now. Yeah. He's looking at us later on down the road, but he's setting up the covenant now so that he and you and I can benefit later. He makes a proposal with our potential. I like that thing because the manifestation, watch, the manifestation of the potential was not evident at the point of the proposal. Mm. Right? But 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 watch this. <laughs> Jesus, help me, Holy Spirit. But as the chronos of time passes by, the fruit of the potential shows up in the kairos. Y'all with me? As, 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 as the chronos, as the days and the months and the years go by, then the fruit pops up right on time. Not maybe when I expect it, but when God expected it. it come, the harvest comes when it's supposed to come. This means the, 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 the produce of the potential harvest pops up when it's supposed to. Malachi 3.11 says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines of your field will not drop their fruit before it's time, saith the Lord Almighty. In his perfect time, in his kairos, watch this, God must have an awesome picture of the perception of humanity redeemed mm -hmm. that he allowed his son Jesus to sacrifice his life so our individual and corporate potentials can be reached. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. In the fullness of time, when all of this is past, the vision that God sees at the inside of eternity must be so awesome that he was willing to send his only son as, as, as a sacrifice, as, 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 as the price for the covenant that, so that if we accept the proposal based on the potential that he sees in us, man, it must be glorious on the other side of this marriage. Yeah. It must be glorious at our um, infinity anniversary. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, it, it must be glorious. God, let the, God loves us that much yeah. that he still proposes to us, that he gives us the option to be with us. Listen, yeah. God loves us before we mess up. God, mm -hmm. did you hear that? Yeah. He loves us before we mess up. He's in, the, he, he's in the fullness of time. He knows the mess up is coming. God loves us when we cut up. He knows we're going to cut up, but that love to us. God loves us when we get up. God loves us when we rise up. God loves us when we step up. So God loves us. So why is it so easy for us to give up? Mm. You gotta understand that God is loving you from the end. He sees the finish line. Yeah. He sees you coming out of the refiner's fire. He sees you pulling off the assembly line mm. with that new smell. Yes. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter how you feel about your now. Right. Whoa. Come on. Wow. It doesn't matter how you feel about your now. God is speaking to you and dealing with your finished product. Mm. Yes. God is speaking to you and shaping you, molding you, pruning you, refining you based upon what he sees at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. One of the members here is a painter, a very gifted and talented painter. And um, he goes into you know rooms that he's going to paint and work on and he sees it finished before he ever picks up a brush. Yeah. He 
he sees how the colors match perfectly from the molding to the walls. And he has a vision of how he's going to look. So then when he begins to do his work, he doesn't get upset if there's a flaw in the wall. He just gets the spackle into it. And then he sands it down. And then he primes it. And he preps it. And he doesn't get upset if the lighting isn't right in the room. He doesn't get upset when he starts to paint and the paint bleeds through. So he has to apply another coat. But he doesn't get upset throughout the process because he has a picture in his mind of what it's going to look like in the end. So he deals with yeah. the flaws. He deals with the imperfections. And he gets it until the colors match perfectly in reality how it did when he first started. Mm. See, that's how God is with us. See, when God is dealing with us, he knows right. our struggles. Yeah. He knows our flaws. He knew them before we were formed in his mother's womb. But you have to understand that he also had a plan. Just like that painter has tools and techniques and tactics to deal yes. with whatever flaws he finds in the wall. God has tools, techniques, and tactics to take care of whatever flaws and whatever impurities and imperfections are inside of us to bring out the gold mm -hmm. that he is proposing to yes. in all of us. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a broken vessel right now. He's the one that's capable of putting you back together. Amen. He, he knew you'd be broken. He knows how to minister to your brokenness. Yes. And then he knows how to use your brokenness. He knows how to use your brokenness. He knows how to use your adversity. He knows how to use your trial and your tribulation. That's part of the process. Amen. It's part of the reason that he chose you in the first place. Yes. <clears throat> Even before you knew you needed a purpose, God had one for you. Amen. Before you knew you had potential, God saw it all along. Mm -hmm. Listen, Moses was a fugitive when he stumbled upon the burning bush. But God didn't see a fugitive. God saw a deliverer. Yeah. He yes. saw his potential, even though music, or Moses was still running from uh -huh. the law. Yeah. David was a shepherd boy right. when the prophet came and anointed him. Everybody else disqualified him. They didn't uh -huh. even count him in the people who could possibly be king. But God saw king potential in David where everyone else just saw a Rudy boy watching after the sheep. Listen, listen. Mm -hmm. The woman at the well, she was a woman who had multiple failed relationships. Yeah. And everybody in town just thought her, oh, jeez, we talk yeah. different under, <laughs> under the hell. I almost, oh, went, I almost oh, went too oh, far. Yeah. I almost went too far. Yeah. We had boundaries under yeah. the hell. Yeah. But amen. <laughs> but everybody looked at her as that over there. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> I got a couple of people that know what I just said. But the, but the reality is when, she, when Jesus oh. saw her, Jesus didn't see the woman with all the failed marriages. Jesus saw an evangelist because yes. after his interaction with her, she ran and told everybody yes. about a man who knew everything that she had every time. When, when, when Jesus met Peter, Peter was just a fisherman, <laughs> but Jesus didn't see a fisherman, and Peter, Jesus saw a disciple. Yes. Jesus saw someone that he could build with, mm -hmm. even though Peter would later deny him, even though Peter would later disobey, even though Peter had a lot of pride and flaws, but that's okay. Jesus knew all those things. He said, Peter, the enemy desires to sift your wheat, but I'm going to pray for you. Not only that, I'm going to keep working on you because I know your potential. I know your end is not where we're at right now. You don't even know what I see in you. Yes. When the, listen, this, uh, there's so much. There's so much. And the, the world saw a, cr a crippled man at the gate called, uh, at the, at the gate called Beautiful, right? right. He's over, but, 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 but the disciples saw in him a miracle. The, 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 the man at the, at the pool of Bethesda, hallelujah, that everyone saw a sickly man. Yeah. But 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 Jesus saw a miracle, right? Yes. right? The woman with the issue of blood, hallelujah. Every, there was a miracle. The centurion with the, the daughter, everyone saw a sick girl, but it was a miracle. Yes. You understand? You yes. understand what I'm saying? Two fish and five loaves. Oh, Everybody man. saw not enough, but God said a miracle. Listen, listen. You might see financial death, but God says a miracle. Yes. You may have heart disease, but God says a miracle. You may have a broken relationship. God says a miracle. Yes. God sees the potential. Yes. 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 
Amen. A miracle. A miracle. God saw beyond every one of those moments because he's omnipresent. Yes. You'll get that. You'll get that. When you're stuck in your moment, yeah. as a child of the Most High God, when you're stuck in your moment, you got to understand that God foresaw this moment mm -hmm. and he still All right. yes. made a proposition and proposed to your potential. He wasn't proposing to your sickness. Amen. He wasn't proposing to your backsliding. Amen. He wasn't proposing to your failure. He wasn't proposing to your shortcoming. He understood that that was going to be a part of it, but he was proposing to who you become after all of that happens. Yeah. After all of that is done. After all of that is passed. God sees beyond this moment and sees us through the eyes of eternity. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts yeah. that I think towards you. That's heavy. Yes, he ain't talking about your thoughts. He's talking about his thoughts. Yes. Do you understand? He says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Save the Lord. Thoughts of peace Amen. and not of evil. Yes. To give you an expected end. There is an expected end that God, and guess what? That expected end is not evil. Is it what that says? That expected end is an end of peace. So if you ain't in a place of peace right now, guess what? God ain't finished with you yet. If you ain't in a place of joy, guess what? God ain't finished with you yet. If you're in a place where there's still some evil abounding, God ain't finished with you yet. You just keep on hoping. You keep on plowing in hope. You keep on, you keep on being obedient. You keep on seeking his face. You keep on allowing him to order your steps. And in that, you will come to the greatness that God sees in you. Yes. Who wants to accept his proposal? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Who here believes in the potential that he sees in you? Yes, yes. Who is willing to allow God to bring you to that place of productivity, mm -hmm. that place of power, mm -hmm. that place of peace, that place of prosperity, and that place of purpose? Yes. Who? Who's willing to accept God's proposal hmm. towards your potential? Hallelujah.